This video is about converting, what are we converting? Oh, literal equations. All right, we're converting literal equations. Good luck. All right, section five deals with literal equations and formulas. Now, when we deal with literal equations, what that means is we have an equation like you'd expect but instead of, let's say, 10 plus 3x equals, gosh, I don't know, uh, 22, and we have an equation where we would solve for x, we're going to have something that involves more variables. Um, that's really all the difference is. Let's imagine that instead of the 10, we put 2a, and we'll keep the 3x, and instead of the 22, we'll keep, um, I don't know, let's make it a, a c. Now, if there's only one variable in an equation, the variable that's there is the one we solve for. So this is kind of straightforward. When there's multiple variables, normally after the problem or in the directions, it will tell you what to solve for. And they could pick, they as whoever writes the problem, can pick any of the variables that are involved. So in this case, we're gonna solve this one for the letter X. Now, I have the two side by side for a reason. The one on the left, I think all of us recognize what to do first, but the one on the right, there's a lot going on, but, it's still the same general format. We have something being added to three times x, and we want to get x by itself. So the something that was added needs to go away. So I'm gonna do minus two a to both sides, just like I did minus 10. Now over here, I get three x equals 22 minus 10 is 12, and we'd be ready to continue on. Over here, we get three x equals, well, these are not like terms. I can't combine them together, so I'm gonna write them c minus two a. And that's what I write. Now back to the one on the left, which we know, we would divide all sides by three, or whatever was in front of the x, the coefficient, and we get x is four. On this side, we still have a coefficient of three, although sometimes you'll find a letter sitting there. If there is, you divide by it. And you get x equals c minus two a over three, and we're done. You've solved a literal equation. Now, this is considered one of the simpler ones in that it's a two-step equation, essentially, that has more variables than you would have expected. A more challenging type looks like this, and I'm gonna stick with x as the variable we're solving for, but this is kind of a classic one. Um, we still want you to solve for x, but it looks more confusing because we have more than one x. So do we mean the one on the left? Do we mean the one on the right? Well, these two are the same thing, and we actually have like terms here because the variable parts, the x's, are the same, the coefficients a and b simply need to combine, be combined together. Now, to prove that this is true, let's imagine that a is five and b is two. I'm just picking numbers out of thin air. And c is, it doesn't make any difference what c is. We'll leave c, c. If I were combining these together, the math behind the step of five plus two is seven is we would actually undistribute the x from this left expression and we would turn this into seven x. Now, we would probably do this part in our head and go right to here, and we wouldn't bother with this step, but we're gonna need it here because A and B don't combine together like five and two do. So we're gonna write A plus B and bring an X out. That's actually called factoring. And then, well, in this step, if we wanted to continue solving for X, we would divide both sides by seven. Here I'm gonna divide both sides by whatever is multiplying the X, the coefficient. In this case, the coefficient is A plus B. Now the a plus b, just like the sevens, would cancel out. I get x is c over a plus b. Now, we seem done, but there is something I need to add in. It's the idea of a restriction. Most of your teachers are gonna expect you to understand restrictions. I'm gonna expect my students to understand this as well. And the restriction is comes about when you see a variable or variables in a denominator in the finished answer. Now, what we know about fractions is that you can't have a number over zero. You can't have a zero in the denominator or the whole problem kind of falls apart. All right, we would call that undefined. So this a plus b, because these are variables, they're allowed to equal a variety of different things. But it's possible that if you had the right combination of a and b, it could end up being zero. And that right combination of a and b is one, one of them is let's say a five and the other one's a negative five. They would combine together to give you zero and that would be bad news. Now, if you already know that or you're not sure what to do with it, 
Here's how you write your restriction. I'm going to box the answer in, but I'm going to leave the restriction blank for now. We're going to fill it in. And I separate the answer from the restriction with a comma. Here's all I do. I write my denominator, the thing that is not allowed to equal 0. And normally what I'll do from there is, I don't like all these variables on the left-hand side. I'll try to get the, one of them on the right and one of them on the left. To do this, I'm just going to do a simple minus b to both sides. And this right here is my restriction. A cannot equal the opposite of B. In other words, if this is 5, this can't be negative 5. All right, so what I'm going to find myself doing is A cannot be negative B. And as long as those two things are not the same, then we're okay. Um, otherwise, um, we've solved a literal equation. Now, there's many, many more of these, and they can be more complex and less complex, but this video is intended to get you started only. So good luck with literal equations and formulas.